Hello. Uh, so, like, I think we can start. Uh, first of all, I, it's my first uh, conference, big conference that I'm speaking on. So, I'm really, stre uh, really stressed and really nervous. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I, uh, I wanted to say something that's uh, uh, something that I noticed uh, spending like two days here at Armenia. It's, you guys are amazing. You guys like are, are so welcoming. I was I feel so very like uh, very like at home. It was very very good, very good experience till, till now. Um, so let's 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 start. So um, today I'm gonna talk about uh, a little about React. Um, and uh, how we, we at SumUp, oh, first of all, my name is Christian, of course, right? <laughs> um, I work at SumUp, it's a company that provides like uh, payment, uh, it provides uh, payment, uh, ca credit card payment methods, and, uh, and also, also sells uh, card readers, uh, you know, card, for uh, credit card payment methods, uh, for credit card payments, right? Um, and, uh, we have like some products. Then we have a bunch of products there, and uh, we had some problems in performance with this problem with this uh, product. And uh, today I'm going to tell, tell tell you, you know, the journey that we passed through uh, and with the problems we uh, had to, along the way. So today I'm going to try I'm going to try to answer the question: What is the best architecture for having the best performance in your app? I hope I can answer this question, and you guys are gonna. Uh, let, you know, some nice takeaways from this talk. First, some dis disclaimers. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, React is probably fast enough. You know, you're not going to run into problems uh, unless you screw up real bad or you have a, a rich client that has a lot of things going on in this client. Probably React is fast enough. So don't pre-optimize. You know, pre-optimization is, is the root of all evil. Also, the web is not is more than React. Uh, sometimes we think that you know, oh, we're gonna solve all the problems with React. You know, no, the web is more than that. Web is HTML, is CSS, is images, uh, videos. So this is another disclaimer. And uh, another disclaimer, as you may notice, I am a very, very nerdy guy, and uh, I love like games. Uh, who here has love like RPG games or fantasy games? Okay, so yeah, I hope you're gonna enjoy it. Um, I have, it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of references. Uh, another thing, um, I am not an English speaker like a native English speaker, so I still ha I have problems to say the word beach. The word beach is the, that I want to say the I want to say is the one that you swim right the, that has like a sand you know the sand. This is what I, 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 I'm talking about. So as I said, my name is Christian, I'm software developer at Samam. Um, I'm from Brazil. Um, from the south of Brazil. Um, I'm living in Germany for two years now. And, and always when I, I say to people like, oh, you're from Brazil, nice, so you, you, you know, you, you, you don't miss the, 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 you know, the beach, the other things. Yeah, well, when the people think about Brazil, they think about Rio de Janeiro, because it's the most well-known city in Brazil, right? Uh, they think about like the beaches, that people like hanging out on the beach, maybe people, no, playing some so soccer or football on the beach, right? But I'm from the south of Brazil. And fun fact, it's, so, it's snow over there. We don't know how to hunt it, but it is snow. It's snow, well. So another fun fact about me is that I love, as I said, I love RPG games and, uh, and epic games, right? Like Witcher, Skyrim, so Dark Souls, you name it, I probably have played. Uh, and today I'm gonna guide you through this the talk using some kind of game reference. I hope you're gonna enjoy. So I have been working as a developer for over 10 years now. It's been a while. I was there. I, I have done some side quests. Have played uh, work with Flash, Flash Player, Silverlight. That was the way you used to do right Richard clients in the, on the web like back then. Have worked with Java. Yeah, I worked with the program, uh, Ruby, Ruby on Rails, right? So I have done some side quests. Also have seen the race and fall of many empires like Frameworks, GWT, XJS, CoughScript, have seen all the, you know. Also I have fought some monsters, like uh, these monsters, the Internet Explorer 6, Internet Explorer 7, and Internet Explorer 8. 
you know, I have worked in companies that support those, those, those uh, browsers. And it was very hard back then. You don't know, today, nowadays, it's very good. It's very good. The platform is good nowadays. Uh, but during this journey, and uh, something that you learn when you play games, is that um, there is no over, overpower character, or there is no overpower monster, and uh, no, no overpower hero, right? And how you beat the game, it's by dying. Dying a lot. So you die, then you respawn, right? And then you die again. And there is, so it's the same goes to the developer. You make a lot of mistakes, and you learn from those mistakes, right? Um, I hope we are, can, I'm going to share to you today two, uh, some mistakes we made there at SumUp, and I hope you guys can uh, relate and not commit the same mistakes, and make the same mistakes, right? So how, how is it going to work? I'm going to tell the story when I uh, became more aware about performance. Um, I'm going to talk about the problem, why is this, this is a problem, right? And just to, uh, when I talk performance, talk, you know, when I tell performance, it's about uh, you know, uh, how the user experience your website, the whole experience, not just uh, you know, inter interactivity. So, and, uh, sorry, whoops, go back. Uh, I'm gonna know, uh, know your enemies, uh, how, uh, they're gonna t tell you the metrics, how to, throw, to you know, measure your website and try to, and what, how to tackle the, the, the problems. Uh, the impact of your decisions, I think it's the most important part of this, this talk, is that you have to be aware of this, and some lessons learned that uh, I learned in, through this journey. So this story. This story happened um, when I spent two, two weeks on my parents. Uh, I, live, I, I used to live in a city that's a small city, far from the capitals there in Brazil. Um, and during this, this stay, you know, this, uh, these vacations, my mom, she's a retired old lady, that um, she's told me, ah, oh, I, I, you create this small, I open up this small store that, you know, I'm selling some clothes. Uh, people are asking me to accept cars, right? And then I said, oh, you asked me, you asked the right guy because you work in this company that does exactly this, so yeah, you, you're gonna be proud of me, right? I said, oh, nice. I'm gonna make my mom proud. Yes. And then that's uh, said, mom, access this where, uh, URL and you know you do the sign up. And then she entered in the URL. <laughs> and then she said, oops. She said, it's not working. I said, what? I said, no, I didn't deploy anything. What is happening? It was just slow. It's slow as fuck. You can see it's 15 seconds. It's so now, now that's rendered something. This is insane. And uh, this is what my, my, this is what my, my face. So says, okay, something really bad happened. And I died, right? Then I respond. And uh, something I noticed is that say, the, the decisions that were, were ma making there back in Germany were affecting, dire were affecting directly the experience my mom was, was having on, on our app, right? And for now on, she, after she, she uh, signed up with us, I, every single decision that I made would impact directly her because she's a user now. So, and if you don't know, uh, there is a fun fact about the Latino moms, the moms on South America, they have a very good skill when it comes for, to throwing slippers on the kids. Me. I said, no. So uh, I'll probably would die again. So yeah. Uh, so okay, I, I got I, I got that this was a problem. But why? Why? Why was a problem? I wasn't experienced that uh, there back in Germany. Why it was so bad? It's bad because um, if you get the average connection speed uh, connection in Brazil, it's four megabits per second. You know, mobile connection. And this is small cities like the one my mom used to live. Um, it's more common having mobiles than this desktop. So uh, smartphones actually, smartphones than desktops. And uh, the internet is quite, is quite like, a, uh, it's, it's not that cheap, uh, they connect, they connect uh, the internet. So people used to use like uh, mobile connections for even for at home. If you do some math, some simple math, you can see that four megabits is 500 kilobytes per second, then uh, you get an average website which is five megabytes, 
accordingly with web page uh, test. And then you can see that's just this amount of data takes 10 seconds just for a simple website, right? And if you get like uh, the, per the user per perception of it, uh, of the, your website, you can see here, this is a Google research that they, they, they found out that from zero to, se to, st to, to 100 milliseconds, the user is gonna feel like, nice, nice, the website is fast. From 300 to one second, they're still gonna f enjoy your website if something is happening. But when it's one second or more, then they start like losing focus and maybe they bail out. And if the ones that sticks more than 10 seconds, it's just frustration, right? The second problem, as I mentioned, the mobile took over the internet and you still don't care about mobile. And here's the numbers. You can see that South America, most of the time people are using, uh, you know, this is percent of the time uh, per device. Um, you can see that 76% is using mobile on South America, 86% on Asia, like the total amount of time. Then in the world, the whole world is six, six, that's six, uh, 61, right? Um, the, and then if you go to the, if you get these people, uh, you, you see that, you know, 75% is Android users. And, se and the, if you go deeper, you can see that, you know, a, 38% or more, it's they are using old smartphone, old, old versions of Android. That means, or either it's an old version, or an old smartphone, or it's a low budget smartphone, right? So it's a big, bigger problem than we thought. We can see the cost of JavaScript here uh, for, for processing one megabit bytes of JavaScript. It takes two seconds on iPhone 8, but the average phone takes like uh, 13 seconds, 15 seconds for S, uh, Samsung S7, and not to even mention the low ends, like it can go to 30, 30 seconds. I'm saying that you should uh, aim to optimize for this, those users. Actually, no, you have to know your audience, know your, your, like, uh, your targets like as a company, who, is, who here has access to the Google Analytics of their companies. Yeah, not many people. So that means, you actually are programming without knowing to what, what is your like, audience, right? So you have to know your audience and then you can apply, uh, you can apply some technique. So knowing your enemies, what's the mean by that? Like the user experience, like how, how the user perceive uh, and how to measure this. It's quite, it's quite hard actually because it's not about loading time anymore. It's about the experience when the, user, the, the, the website is like loading, right? Or, or the user when you user, uh, no, interact with your website, right? Uh, Google made like a very nice uh, model in order to, uh, to try to break down this uh, performance perception, which is the rail model, which is like, uh, you can see, uh, there is like response, which is when user interact, how long it takes to, to something happens on the website. Animation, which is the, the, the 60, you have to have at least 60 uh, frames per second to, to feel natural. The idle is when he, it's how much you use uh, when the user not doing anything in your website, in your, in your page. Uh, what you do, right? So you can fetch stuff, you can send things to Google Analytics. Uh, and load time, right? Load time, it's more, it's when the user entering your web page till it uh, loads something on the, on the screen. And you can break down the load time in like some other metrics, like time to first byte, which is the first request, the get request, right? Um, first paint, which is when something appears on the website, on your website. Yeah, first contentful paint, something more uh, after the first paint. Um, also, the first minimal paint is a little trickier to to measure because it's the, the the most important part of your website when it happens, right? And time to interactive, which is when the everything is loaded, the user can interact with your website. So you can measure this using like Lighthouse or there are oh, a bunch of tools. What I recommend here and we started to do it like there at some up with like you should have, you, sh you should use like automated. This checking should be automated like with bots with, uh, or, you know, inside your pipeline. Um, this helps a lot to, to promote like performance war uh, awareness. 
okay, you know your problems, so what's the impact of your decisions? What happens? Um, the thing that you have to know is that not all products are, are equal. You know, you have like app-like app pages, you have landing pages, you have content, content have pages, you have entry points like login and uh, create account uh, pages, so it's not like a, there's no own solution for everything, right? Uh, how was the web before? Before was uh, before the SPAs, right? We used to render everything on the on the on the server side and then deliver everything to the user, right? In one round, it was there was some benefits on it, but if you, hear, if you see here, the responsiveness of the, the website is not so good. But the responsiveness here, I say, is more um, from the user, uh, you know, clicking a link and start to navigate between your pages. The, before, you, you had to reload every single time the page, right? So it was not that great experience. Nowadays, with React simple page applications or a simple SPA, React pure SPA, uh, you rely a lot on JavaScript. It it's helps on the responsiveness because it makes it uh, when the user, when they load the JavaScript, they load the, the interacts is more, is more smooth. It's smoother than, than, than uh, the old version, the server-side render, rendering, you can see here. And why it's happened is because you, you get, right, you have the first uh, get, then you receive some HTML, and then you have the bundle size, JS, and then you render the page, right? So you, have, you can see here over time that uh, the first, first paint is kind of, first paint is, is nice, but the first contentful paint is kind of, Shitty, right? It's, it takes some time. So how do you do? How do you fix this problem? Uh, you have to make an. The, I'm gonna explain a little bit what was the problem back then in that sum up. Uh, we had like we grow fast and we lose. We lost control. So uh, what's what's happened was like uh, you have the initial, initial commit and it, this happens a lot in any app and then. You add something, like add some pages, and then you team grow and add some more, like some React date picker, some another uh, polyfill, some UI library, and then someone includes Redux for some reason, and then suddenly you have a fucking big app that's, <laughs> you know, it's a bloated JavaScript, and you die, right? <laughs> so you have Respawn. What, how we fixed this there at some map, we started to uh, fix, no, we, one idea for, for fixing this is it would be uh, integrating this bundle size uh, the, the tools into your app so you can like be more aware of your decisions, right? So then you can understand the problem and start tackling. Uh, who here knows code, code splitting? Okay, so let's, let's be really, real, quick, real quick here. The code splitting, it's, ba it's basically, oops, it's basically uh, uh, cutting parts of your app and delivers less stuff, right? You do that by relying on the uh, sync import of, your app, of the, the, the comp components of your app, right? For instance, the, more, the most common approach is per page. So the page is isolated of the whole uh, main app. What's the problem here is that uh, what happens here is the user just gets what he wants. The, the for instance, login page and the account page here are like separated. Uh, the problem here is that we still have some shard dependencies, right? Dependencies, right? Um, I'm, gonna t I'm gonna explain a little uh, later how to tackle this. Uh, what happens here is that we improve uh, loading time, you improve like the whole uh, painting time, let's say, uh, but you harm responsiveness and, and you harm with complexity, right? Because the web starts to grow in complexity, how far you go with code splitting might affect your whole experience. And why does this, this happen? Is because you had uh, b before the bundle JS, yes, and then you have now some small uh, bundles specific for the uh, specific for the page that you are rendering, right? But we love React, and this is controversial because uh, Dan is sitting right there. Uh, we love React. But do we need React for everything? Maybe not. Yes, React is kind of heavy, right? For instance, if you take Preact, it's 30.5 kilobytes 
Well, while React is 32 kilobytes, right? It, okay, it's not, it's not that big, but, you know, for a single page that is like just a form, do, why do you need React for a form? You, you don't need it. For instance, the, the page that I just showed before was a form with two inputs. Do you need React for this? So what we do, what you can do, it's like split by multiple entries on your web pack. So you can apply what's what makes sense to some pages, and you know, leave React to dealing with that that part of your your web page. So you can uh, have like a specific uh, solutions for for some pages. And the, how we do that? It's kind of simple actually. The web pack four, you can have like multiple entries. We did that with uh, Angular when we were porting Angular to React there at SumUp. Uh, we had like uh, two main entries, and you can split. You can split the whole de dependencies between them. So you can have like uh, you can see here that it's uh, you have the, the uh, its own HTML and uh, the bun uh, simple bundle and the dependencies, right? So it's uh, it's a nice way for for achieving this. Uh, what's the next step? Well, how about having the both of the, you know, the best of the both, the both sides? So we, we went to the senior developers, and the senior developer said, well, server-side render. You, have to, you start to, uh, to use render on the, the website, uh, on the server side, and then you hydrate on the, on the, on the front end, on the front end, right? That's amazing. That sounds like a real good. Very good solution. Uh, why it's good? Because you, start, you deliver more contents on the first round of the trip of the, of when you use it as access to your website. Um, how you can achieve that is by or either using the, the, the built-in React DOM server that you can render the string, and then on the, the client side, you just hydrate it, which is kind of, it's not that simple actually, um, but it's, it's for, for simple apps can, can solve the problem. At SumUp, we choose Next, actually. Uh, it's kind of a meta framework uh, because they have their own server and they have their own, like, the, you don't import stuff like uh, uh, the way you do in, in React. Uh, they have some, their own, like, uh, like a, uh, let's say, abstractions, let's say. Um, what we achieved with this was this incredible six seconds, right, of uh, you know, loading the whole page. And uh, we thought, oh, that was awesome. I'm going to make my mom so, so proud of me. Um, and, that's, and then with server-side uh, server render and hydration, we achieved like a, a less load time. You know, you can see that's uh, improved like first painting, yeah, first contentful paint. Um, also, first contentful manifold paint, but increased complexity, right? Because, you know, there are libraries that doesn't work with to both of the of both sides, right? There are some you have to think about coding for both sides, so it's increased complexity a little bit. Uh, there are another another problem also that you can see here for its contentful paints. It's like go go for uh, you deliver it uh, earlier, but the time to interact still remains the same, and you can see here. What is the outcome of having time to interactive high, like a high time to interactive? It takes almost nine, nine seconds for 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 having a uh, web page uh, interactive. Uh, and why does it happen? Is because uh, even though you are delivering more stuff, uh, you you have all the scripts to to be run on the other side, on the client side. Uh, to be fair, here we have. Um, Google Analytics, Optimize, and Optimizely, and some other frameworks that's, other libraries, third-party libraries, that makes this common here big, and that's why we have these long tasks. Um, so, but, so, you see that even though using like a different architecture, uh, still, you know, I thought, ah, oh, my one is gonna laugh, but actually, he, I make the hell hungry, right? And I died, right? So, so that was the mistakes and the things that we learned through this journey. Um, by that, there is uh, the lessons learned are uh, that first test your app in real devices. This is something that is crucial. You know, you can do like you can integrate like Google Analytics, uh, 
getting data from the users, like for instance, uh, you, uh, you can combine user timing, uh, the user timing API and the Google Analytics in order to collect data from real devices. Uh, it's quite easy, or you can use like Perform.js or something, or some library like this that does, that does it for you and sends to the Google Analytics. Uh, something is important was use tools that promote performance awareness. Uh, that's ev every single uh, you know, decision that you make, you can see what's the outcome of it. Uh, performance enhancement also comes with complexity. Uh, you know, you can use code splitting, you can use SSR, you can go crazy, but uh, per this performance comes with complexity. Uh, architect your app uh, accordingly with the page or purpose, as I mentioned, why a, 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 from, a form has to use React? You can just uh, have like static page, I don't know. So that's, uh, that's you have to, to know your, your product, your audience, and then you can uh, tackle performance for them. Uh, there are no flawless solutions, as, as you saw there. The, uh, the server side render was good, but even though it was not that, uh, the, the time to interact is, it remains the, the same, right? So not that good experience. And the message, the message that you'd like to, to, to leave here is like, don't let your decisions hurt somewhere, somewhere, someone else's mom. Uh, so I think it's, uh, you have to think about whatever you, you add to your app and if it's gonna hurt the performance and the experience, right? sit together with your designer, sit together with your UX guy, uh, person, and uh, you know, plan a nice experience for the user, relating when it's uh, loading time, uh, loading uh, your app. Is it a rant? Maybe not, maybe yes, but uh, you know, I hope I can uh, learn more and share with you guys uh, next year, maybe. Thank you. If you have like any like feedback, please like you can tweet me. You can send my DMs. Like are open or I gonna stick around. You can uh, have like a nice chat. Questions? Oh shit! No. <laughs> Go ahead. So you you talk about the time to interactive scene being a little bad. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's not that simple. You have to think more. Um, you have to. You can like combine uh, uh, solutions, like uh, for instance, code splitting and all these things, right? So uh, that's the way for improving this. Um, but I know I don't know. You can go crazy. You can you know have one app. You can go like for instance, the next step that we are do, we are going there at some app is going to be the micro frameworks, right? So it's gonna be even more isolated than each app or each page, part of our page is gonna be their own dependencies, their own app, a separate app. Um, but um, you have to choose. You have to choose your, try, uh, your tools, what makes more sense. As I meant, as, uh, something that's, uh, I was listening to a podcast uh, yeah, the other day and the co-creator of GraphQL, he said something that for me was awesome. Performance in infrastructure, it's a, it's a problem that you have to earn. If you, do, if, if you, don't, if you have a, a website that's loading one second and no one uses, what's the purpose, right? So you have kind of understand this. Thank you. Other questions? I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thank you. Thank you.